Hey, everybody. Game time. We all have to call the one person we truly believe we have loved. My God, Michael, you're a charming host. Who makes the first call? Hola, Matt. How are you? Hola, Giovanni. ¿Cómo estás? Estoy muy emocionado. I'm very happy and um, an honor to talk to you. Uh, you're, su you're such a role model and I'm very happy to share the movie with our audience. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you so much. Let me start with a fun question. In the movie, Harold has the most intense birthday party. Have you ever had a crazy birthday party? Uh, you know, I had a really fun, yeah, I had a pretty crazy birthday party in New York. I think it was when I turned 25. Uh, I had all of my friends come over and we all got in full 80s costume, the boys and the girls. And we all went out dancing to uh, an 80s um, dance club. And we danced until like 4 a.m. And that was, a, I mean, I don't know if it was crazy. It didn't dissolve, devolve into chaos like this party does, but it was a lot of fun. It sounds like a lot of fun. It sounds, it really does. Happy birthday. You're late. Oh, Michael, you kill me. When he's sober, he's dangerous. When he drinks, he's lethal. And the, the original movie, well, it's a, it's a play, and then it became a movie in the 70s, and it was groundbreaking in the 70s because it was a cast of gay men. And 50 year, years later, and we have this cast of amazing gay men, and still groundbreaking because it doesn't happen often. What needs to change so it stops being groundbreaking and it's just like something that happens and that is or something regular? Uh, well, you know, I'm really thankful to producers like Ryan Murphy who are putting casts like this together and using their power not to look down from the mountain, but to reach down and, and lift other people up with them. Uh, so I think it takes producers like that and creators like that to make those changes. But I think we owe so much, just the fact that we can have the cast, this openly gay cast, all of whom have thriving careers in this day and age. I think we owe, owe that in large part to Mark Crowley and this incredible original cast who were courageous enough to take on this play at a time when it was really risky to do so and who paved the way for many of us. We definitely stand on their shoulders among many others in our community over the years. Uh, so uh, I'm very thankful to them. And how's the experience to go from a play to a movie? Because you guys did both, right? We did both um, and they were very different in some ways. And I think the nice thing is that we had an incredible sense of ensemble and um, uh, affection and camaraderie with each other. Uh, that was hard earned on stage doing a play together every you know eight times a week for many many weeks um, and I think that was really effortless to bring to the set but it was also uh, a more inherently intimate medium and um, we had uh, a great director in Joe Mantello who wasn't going to let us rest on our laurels or just do what we did on stage when the cameras were rolling he wanted us to keep finding new nuance and detail in the character. And uh, we had a great new set and new costumes, all of which really informed the work as well. So uh, they were both really great, very unique experiences from each other. Speaking of costumes, it's really cool to see this period of time. And I, I was wondering, was there ever a conversation to modernize the story, to bring it to present day? Well, I think so much of what's important about the story is that it's just a couple months before Stonewall. Uh, and it's it's a play that's about the cost of oppression and what happens when a group of people are oppressed and, and are told they're less than and, and are, are can't really congregate uh, outside of an apartment like this. You know, it's illegal to and, um, you know, they're told it's a mental condition by health officials. So um, I think the period and having an understanding of the period is so important to the dynamics that are played between these men in, in at the party and it's what happens over the course of the evening is such a, uh, an extension of um, the oppression they're feeling from outside the apartment. So uh, I think it's important to keep it in the time period. Speaking of the men, I was watching it with my boyfriend and we were like, oh, you're a little bit like Harold and you're a little bit like Emery. It's beautiful to have all these different type of gay men. And do you think that people are gonna resonate to each character? 
Yeah, you know, it blows my mind that Mark Crowley was able to write nine such so different gay, well, eight and maybe one who we're not really sure about, but all these different types of gay men 50 year, plus years ago. You know, we don't see writers doing that today in 2020. So he was so ahead of his time in that regard. But one of the great things for me was backstage after the play, so many young people would come up to me and say exactly what you're saying, Giovanni. They'd say, oh, I know someone who's just like Harold, or I know a friend who's like Michael. Ooh, you get him drinking and he will read you or whatever it is, or I've been to parties like that or whatever it is. So um, there was something that he wrote that made this piece really timeless. And even though obviously we've come a, a tremendous way since 1968, it was still, it still really resonated with people of all ages. Matt, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Giovanni. Bye. Hasta luego. Adios. Adios.